Good morning, seekers. Welcome to the No Madness Live. <laughs> if you're new here, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to become a member, link's in the description. Go on now. Go on now, we need some more members. I have more gifts to give away. <laughs> I did my hair. I foiled my whole head. Yep. Getting ready. Getting ready to leave town. Foiled the whole head. I could never put bleach just on my scalp. <laughs> I would swell up because I'm kind of allergic to it. <laughs> so I have to do foiling. I prefer it anyway. I think it looks better. And I don't bring, I don't take the foils out till it's white. I never take it out when it's yellow. You look like a light bulb. So there you go. Hair is done. Good morning, Carolina. Hi, Granny. You set your alarm and here we are. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, Rain. Yeah, I've been busy all morning. I was getting my, doing my hair. I did it up in the diva room. I take my little cart with my mirror on it and I do the back. I foil all the back, right? I don't do the underneath or it'll break off. You don't want to do like right at the neck because this hair will break off. So I just leave it the natural. I kind of like the two-tone anyway. Anyway, and then I sit there and I foil my whole head. So while I was foiling my whole head, if from beginning to end, from beginning to blow dry, it takes two hours. I only have to do it every five, six weeks. So I have to really gear myself up for it because it's really a lot of work on my shoulder. Like now these fingers are hurting. Um, it really messes up my shoulder. That's why I don't do hair anymore. Um, I am going to be teaching someone how to barber um, when I leave here and go on my little hiatus. Um, one of the things I'm going to be doing. And, um, and then hopefully have a little bit of fun. Oh, hello, M. Phoenix. So, yeah, that's what I did. I was doing my hair all morning. And, um, yeah, and now my fingers, these three fingers hurt. And I keep shaking them. I don't know. I'm probably got some pinch nerve. Probably. I don't know. I don't look into it. Don't care. I'm a fighter. <laughs> I did a little pink. We went pink today because we went blonder. <laughs> so we went pink. Good morning, Signe. Good morning, Tally girl. The most I've ever foiled is a streak in the front of my hair next to my bangs. Oh my God. Well, I've done it for almost 30 years. So I learned how to do it on myself because I know what color I like. I went in once when I was in Illinois and she made my hair gold and yellow. And I don't like gold and yellow. I like white. Yeah, I like white blonde. Mm -hmm. uh, yellow does not look good on me. Orange doesn't look good on me. Just white. Black actually looks good on me too, by the way, um, because my eyes are green. So, when I do dark, and see, it makes my eyes greener. But I don't really like dark hair. It makes me feel old and shrivelly because my roots are so gray. Yeah, it looks like a zipper. <laughs> I'm hoping my hair goes all white. Um, my grandma's did. It went snow white. So I'm hoping I take after her, my hair goes snow white. Got to wait that out, though, because we got a long way to go. See? Pretty dark underneath. Hide that. Oh, put that away. So anyway, whack a do, whack a do's, right? So I was listening to Dragnaut while I was doing my hair. Put my headset in and just went to work, right? And um, the whole Shanny thing, Shanny for Christ, Shanny needs love, whatever you want to call her. She's on Twitch now, live, or not right now, but I mean doing lives. Um, so if you're not caught up, we've been covering it. Um, and, uh, you know, Rev lost it. And uh, I I'm going to guess it's not the first time. It was just the first time it's been reported to the police. And he apparently kicked Shani's 13-year-old... Um, son that has, he's on the spectrum, autism, K 
kicked him in the head and the ribs. And um, the oldest son, William, who's 15, 16 now, I think, he called the police four days later because obviously the kid was in pain. His brother was in pain. So anyway, the police came, got CPS involved and learned that they were living in a condemned house. Did you know that? Because I didn't know that. That house has been deemed condemned. So the only reason they have electricity is because I guess in Pennsylvania, you can contact the power company on a house that's been condemned um, and say you're working on it and you need the electricity to do the improvements. And they will turn the electricity on. That's the only reason they have electricity, by the way. So they're not working on the house. They're just squatting in it. And it's crazy. Hi, celebrity juicer. And EJ said, I'm not getting notices that you're on. Also, I had to resubscribe. Is it, is it me or is anything else? It's always gone on on YouTube. Always. 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 <laughs> That's why they sold it to G-Man for a dollar. Yeah, they. I mean, Rev's mom died when? 19, or 2013, so nine years ago. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the wackadoos today. Honest to God, I didn't even, I, I wasn't even going to go live today. But I owe it to my subscribers. Because I honestly, I've had enough internet. Um, I actually stayed away from the internet after I got off my live yesterday, I just stayed away from it. And I, I, I went out and did like healthy things. You know what I'm saying? Like, like lived my life because YouTube is not my life, but um, I do like to cover things going on because I feel like it's crazy what is allowed on social media. Um, the people that are allowed on social media, I, I'm just, I find it absolutely crazy. And that's Rev's childhood mattress they sleep on. Oh my God. Stop. Are you serious? Ugh. So anyway, um, so I was listening to Dragnaut and learned some more nuggets. You know what I mean? Um... Well, thank you, Celebrity Juicer. Thank you. I'm, I'm. Thank you for being subscribed. Did you know I knew how? I finally found out. We'll get on with it in a minute. I learned how to check all my analytics. 26,000 people watched me and did not subscribe? That's cruel. That's cruel and unusual punishment to any creator. <laughs> Jason spilled the beans on there. That's the one thing about Jason. We got to give him, okay? Shani will create stories. Shani will do say anything to make herself look good, right? She'll rewrite history if she could. Hell, she'd rewrite the Constitution. Of course, we'd all be living in more chaos than we already are if she did. But I'm just saying, she, but Jason always tells the truth. Rev always tells the truth unless she has given him a script. He will always let the little nuggets out. They will subscribe well. If they do, they do. Anyway, I mean, I've, ch I've changed my whole format because I have learned that unless I'm out driving my golf cart, living in a resort, watching bands, hanging out, living my best life down in Florida while I'm trapped here for a little while longer, there is nothing exciting about my life. So we're always seeking no madness, right? That's the whole purpose of this channel. So when I was out filming my life in Florida, I had no madness, right? Having fun, well, we had a little madness, which made it fun. But here I am trapped for a little while, and it's fine. So we're going to cover, cover other madness. And we're, we're questioning the people that are allowed on these platforms. They offer nothing. They just grift and beg, and we have to watch. They trauma dump on people. Like, people aren't going through it as it is. Yeah, and then they did replace the roof here, and, you know, I had a little Mexican fall through my roof, land on my upstairs floor, staring at me, ankle deep in bricks. Yeah. And so, you know, there's always madness in my life, but um, lately, it's been eventless, so that's fine. So we'll cover other shit going on. And I've been having a good time doing it. It, it kind of, uh, <laughs> I, sometimes I like to sh wag my finger and shake my head. Do you see what I'm saying? 
I do. Yeah, and I give out free gifts. This is the best channel. You ever see any other channels do it? Or the people that sell shit and they never mail it out? That's messed up. You take people's money and you never mail out what they bought? That's insanity to me. I can't believe people do that. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I was listening to Dragnet. Now, some other things came out that I found to be even pretty interesting. Now, we know this is the fifth time CPS has had to remove those kids from that house. I don't know how many strikes you get with CPS, but evidently, according to the whole um, guidelines to get your children back, you basically only have to meet minimum requirements. Minimum requirements. And Shani can't, because Shani's all about Shani. Shani's all about Shani. Did you know, like, they were getting food stamps, and, and G-Man was buying them groceries. Like, G-Man actually bought a bunch of groceries in the house, and Shani sat there and talked about which ones were hers. Now, in order to keep gaining weight while your children and Rev are getting skinnier and gaunt looking, you would have to consume, I'm going to guess, to keep her at that size, at least 5,000 calories a day. And they were living poor. How did she get fatter? Shani, how did you get fatter? And your kids got skinnier and malnourished and underweight. She keeps the food in the bedroom around her. She's always done that, by the way. But they used to have money. She used to just order those kids Uber Eats. Yeah, and it's documented on videos. She has mini fridges in her room, right? She'll send her son. Remember when she sent her son when Rev was in jail? She sent him down to the, all by himself, walk down to whatever par, gas station party store and bring her back a bunch of snacks. Can you imagine if he would have just snuck one of those to eat? I mean, she had these kids believing that she's so sick that the food had to go to her. I mean, can you believe this being a mom? Listen, moms don't do that. My kids eat before me. I'm still that way. How are you doing? Do you got enough food? You know, this, that, and the other thing. Is everything going okay? Let me send you some uh, groceries or food, or I'm on my way there. And, and every time I go there, I go do a huge grocery haul. I fill the pantry, the freezer. I make dinners. That's what you do. So anyway, they were getting enough money in food stamps. She was just eating it all. She was eating it all. That's why Rev looks so gaunt. And then he spends two weeks in jail and he actually looked healthier when he got out. Rev. Hey, Rev. I'm not a big fan of yours, but guess what? You know, it would be epic. By the way, she's talking to her ex-husband. Remember the one she married to get her kids back from CPS because he had a job and, um, and he provided a home and, and food and all that? And, and it was successful. She got her kids back because of Chris. Guess who she's talking to again? Texting. Rev didn't even know it. Chris. Yeah, they were getting like 800 a month, seven or 800 a month in food stamps. Uh huh. And that explains how she blew up bigger. Anyway, she's talking to Chris again. Rev, you know what would be gold, Rev? If you just got in the vehicle and left. Just, just leave. Just leave. She'd be forced to fix herself. You can't be her cuck forever. He wanted to go sell some things to bring home some money. And she didn't let, I, no, you can't go. I need you. I need you. As she's sitting on a live. Chris doesn't want Shani. Yeah, well, you never know. She may be doing it just to get Rev off his ass. Because remember in her little live streams, he, he's never going to get a job. He's never going to go to work. So he's out there trying to sell shit like his magic cards. Because Rev is a 13-year-old. Rev was just your, th your, th your third child. That's all he was. He's your emotional donkey. She called him 11 times. I know he, no, he didn't even leave. He was, he was out washing the car. She called him 11 times. She needed him in the house as she sat on the bed 
in that same stink pile. You know what I'm saying? I always buy grocery for my grown kids, even buy special treats. Right! I'm always buying shit. Like, I, listen, I've got, I've got stuff that I got for Baby No Madness, like um, organic foods. Oh, when he left to get the Delta 8, okay. Because I stopped watching her. She triggers the shit out of me because I, I know how poorly her children were treated. That's the worst you can do for me is treat an animal poorly or a child on social media. And I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Even, even like having an elderly dog that needs more compassion and love than a puppy. And you stay with that dog till its last day. You convalescent that dog. You don't go euthanize it to make your life easier. That right there. I mean, I, I will cry at just the thought of that. Because these little pups, these little pups, they're going to get old. They're going to be nine years old, you know, in uh, January and in, um, all right, when's Jaxie's birthday? December and January, right? Now they're three months apart. They're a full litter apart. <laughs> but I'm just saying is uh, they're, they're going to like Tigsy, he, he's a March baby, right? I th Jan January, December. December is Jaxie, yes. Um, yeah, will you be my mom? My mom's kind of like Shani in a way. How old are you, Magenna? You don't need a mom, do you? Of course I'll be your mom. <laughs> I'll be everybody's mom. I don't care. It's just about love. How hard is this? Shani wants everybody to love her and take care of her, but she don't. But anyone else that wants that, they're too needy. They need to go. Because it's all about her. She, she does this regression thing. It's really creepy. Do you think Jason will ever wake up? No. Because he was babied and mama boyed. He was, he's a, he was a mama's boy. He never had to work. He's never learned consequence. He's never learned um, pride and nothing. No. Shani's got him so codependent now. He really believes that he couldn't live without her. In fact, she gave her kids up for him. So there's that. They're codependent on each other. Then they don't have to look at the life they live as wrong. Right? Now the kids are gone. They don't have to look at the kids getting skinnier and more gaunt and being far behind developmentally anymore. Woof. They, they can erase that. Jason does have moments of clarity. Well, the one thing about Jason is, is he's just going to tell you how it is, even if it buries himself. He just will because he's a child. He's not really a liar. He's just a child. It's a petulant child. And Shani's diagnosed him in so many ways. I have no idea what the deal is with him. She gets him on medication, but not herself. Yeah, the performance art was terrible. We showed that on my, we showed that on my channel. It's called uh, Love Story, Rev and Shani. Go ahead and watch it. Go back and watch it. We covered that, all of it. All the performance art, the eviction, everything. I live one minute away from my mom and no contact with her. She was on heroin all my life, so I had to raise myself and my brothers. I'm 48, I had two kids, I will never do what she did to me, I always take. Wow. That I always feel for adult and children, children and adult children of uh, drug addicts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a selfish act. I'm glad you um, didn't repeat history. I'm glad you turned it around. You broke the cycle. Good for you, Magenna. When Jason said he was Chris Watts, the family. Oh, he would Chris Watts, the family. Yeah, oh, I heard all of it. Yeah, but, you know, whatever. I, I mean, five times. It's the fifth time they've been taken away. When does the buck stop? When do they, is this it? I hope so. The kids are allowed to text her right now. Wouldn't she be able to do emotional manipulation on them? 
How is CPS allowing her to text with her sons? Or is she lying? Do you know that they spend more time critiquing and um, spying on um, people that have taken in children that ha have gone through it or babies that were born to addicts? Like they spend more time putting the people taking care of the child under a microscope than they do the, own, the biological parent. The biological parent only needs to do the minimal to get that child back. And, and sometimes in cases, the child never even knew those parents. I'll, I could tell you about a case right now. Oh my goodness. This needs to be fixed. This needs to be stopped. We're paying for these programs. We're paying for these people. It has to be stopped. Well, the boys, actually, I know they're old enough, um, but they're, mental, they're developmentally behind. So I'm going to guess William at 16 is about a 14-year-old. And I'm going to guess Zach, the autistic child that's 13, is about a 10 or 9 or 8-year-old. But we need to fix this. I'm, I'm sick of this shit. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to go to... I got to remember the case. I should Google that first. Oh my God. Unbelievable. God's got me and I have an amazing hubby. There it is. That's what we're talking about. Let me get my keyboard. It was a little girl too. Hold on. I think it was in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, that uh, there's so many bad ones. Are you in Miami? No, I'm in Michigan. <laughs> Temporarily. Yeah, they are broken. But here's the problem. It takes a village to raise a child, right? But when you are reporting, like there are things they find significant and things they find insignificant. That's the problem. The problem isn't that they're so overwhelmed that they can't, listen, there should be, there should be no exception. No, the, the, what, there, there's no A to Z. Literally, it's based on the report that CPS people give, right? So they may find things less important than say another CPS worker, right? Or they may just get so desensitized, they've seen this a hundred times, right? That it is a desensitized thing. The truth is, they could have at any time watched Shani's live streams. Period. And just remove the kids based on that. Sitting in the bed, doing drugs, getting high, Rev driving to the elementary school to pick up Zach, high as hell, crazy as hell, right? I mean, this is what I'm talking about. It's like, they don't want to open a case. They have to go through some, every state's different too. I'm trying to remember this little girl's name. I feel like it was Michigan. See, this is nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. 
Yeah, they need a state-to-state -state record exchange. Yeah, getting lost across. And, and not only that, like, the whole Rev and Shandy thing. Uh, as soon as they landed their ass in uh, Pennsylvania, CPS was knocking on the door, right? Because people were calling. Because Rev threatened to beat Zachary in the car. And um, people were calling. And they came and they looked around. Uh, okay, bye. I don't know, but there should be, there's, sh I got to fly in here and I'm going to, I'm listen, you and I are going to tango later. So you better go fuck off somewhere. You got 2000 square feet. Stay out of my space. Anyway. So I feel like, okay, there should be, if a child is born addicted to any drugs and they have to go through withdrawal as a newborn, they have to go into the NICU. They, they're shaking, um, trying to fight the withdrawal. They may have, I don't know, maybe even developmental problems later on because of it right there. Boom, done, cut off, end of. That's it. You'll see him when he's 18 if he, if he wants to see you or her. End of, done. But no, we empathize in the system more with the addict. Who, by the way, is going to be on and off, on and off, on and off, right? On and off with their addiction. Right? Because the truth is, if they were going to learn anything, they would have sacrificed. If they were ever going to sacrifice for their child in their, their lifetime, they would sacrifice while it's in the womb. That would have been the first step. But if they couldn't do that, and, and then what? This child's going to go through, what? People in and out of the home, unstableness, fighting, weird shit, um, addicts, and and on the wagon, off the wagon. I mean, really? Do you know how many messed up adults are out there living through trauma of childhood? And we can't fix that? We can fix it right at birth. That should be an automatic, you're done. Because this child's going to get a chance at a real life. And let's talk about these foster homes. I'm sorry, but if your job is to take care of somebody else's child, and possibly raise them as your own and adopt them. And you're only in it for the money. So you are you can't stand these kids, right? Yeah, we see it all the time. The abuse that happens to kids in foster care. This is supposed to be their safe haven. So why don't you make it mandatory that there's audio and video recordings in that home? The children's rooms, the main Areas where everybody's at, the kitchen, the living room, you know, bathrooms are private, but you still got audio. Because if anybody's being mistreated, it, my God, I don't understand it. You sign up to be foster care, you sign up for the state to be in your life. End of. And if you got nothing to hide, you'd have no problem with it. Mm mm mm. So I think it was on Law uh, and Crime Network. I'm going to go to their playlist. And this woman had this little girl from the time she was born. This woman. And she was such a good mama. That little girl wanted for nothing. She just had a beautiful home, a beautiful life. And then... They came knocking on the door. Um, the baby didn't even know the parents. She didn't know her parents because um, they were just terrible people. And they did the minimal. And I think the baby was two years old. And they came and took her away. Back to her parents, who she'd never known. She only knew this woman as her mom. That woman hand to hand over all the beautiful clothes. Uh, everything she bought for that baby. And... She ended up dead. Of course she did. And she ended up in a um, two crates that were zip tied together. That's where they put her body in two plastic crates, zip tied it, and then hooked a cement block to it and dropped it down in a lake. Now she was recovered. And this woman had to sit as a witness in trial. Why? 
So now you're now you want to convict these two. You're aware of that horrific story? Yeah. It was on a long crime. But when that mom that the real mom to me, not not those piece of shit parents. But anyway, um, when she had to sit there and she sobbed because her heart was so broken. I'm like, why would you even make her come in and testify what a good life she had before you handed her over to these horrible people? Now you're going to go, see, she had a good life. Then why'd you remove her? She'd still be here today. The devil done walk this earth. He walks this earth. And sometimes we give too much authority to strangers. They actually, the fate of children is in these people's hands. These workers, these case workers, these, these laws, these judges. And there's, you know what the weird part is? There's these, um, well, like, okay, every child, ooh, I got a, my package is here. Um, Mr. Tiggs needed his toothbrushes. Um, anyway, so this is weird. So every child removed, just like Shani's kids. Now they both have a lawyer, because that's what happens. They get assigned a lawyer, their own personal lawyer. So they should have the best interest of the children, right? No, because did you know that actually um, the CPS is above them? They're above them. So if the lawyer says, no, that ain't going to happen. This child is not going in there. They say, well, there's nothing we can do because CPS approved it. That's what they say. So don't think them having their own lawyer is some great feat because it's not. They're just there for the court hearings. That's it. It's really sad. How this works is really sad. And the fact that parents um, only have to do the minimal. And I think it's like, I don't even know. What do they give them? Four to six months and then they go to court. Well, you know, uh, they're trying. They're trying. And, and you know, the truth is when you're dealing with a drug addict that just... Um, on the wagon, off the wagon. Wants, they want CPS out of their life, by the way, because they can go back to doing their drugs. They don't have to go and piss and all that stuff anymore. So they can't wait. They'll, they'll do the minimum for as long as they have to before a court CPS closes the case. And look how many times it gets opened back up. Because you think these people are going to have an epiphany and they're just going to they're gonna go on this, this road of self-discovery? Are you kidding me? They would have to be forced. And I'm sorry, but I think if it comes to, um, if your children are taken away, I'm sorry, but I don't feel like their main goal should be to reunite them if you're dealing with certain things like child abuse and drug addiction. I, I mean, there are people, you know, they, they act like they're victims of their children being taken away. And the truth is, is um, the damage is done. I'm curious how Shani will react when she finds out the boys are worth fifteen hundred a month each to the foster parent. She probably won't. She won't care about that. She's on her way to disability, right? She's got all these dreams now. She's gonna have, you know, gastric bypass, and it's not like she had infants and toddlers. She had boys that took care of themselves for years. So she just don't want to be followed around. She don't want to be held to task. Shani has never want to be held to task. This is why she is, oh, bye. When I get all better, I'll be back in your life. Now, she's doing the math. Well, you know, William moved back in and take care of me in two years. He'll be 18. She will qualify for disability. Absolutely. Just watch. She's never applied. You just watch, though. She's got an aide coming into her house. Did you know that? They're going to bring an aide into the house to help take care of her. I mean, she has bed-bound herself. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. In her mind. I can't. I can't. She's never worked, neither has Rev. She used to work. Back when, uh, you know, 
she didn't have people that gave her everything. She used her kids. Yeah, we'll see if she gets an aid in there. Trust me, she will film it. She's going to prove it. Hold on. Ouch. She'll prove it. So, got Mr. Tiggs' toothbrushes. That's what just arrived. I'm trying to get everything squared away before I go. And they don't sell these. We don't have a pet smart, but. Tiggsy! Toothbrush! Oh, look it. He's like, what? He was mad because he didn't have any this morning. Want your toothbrush? my baby. And this is Jexy Poop. He is a nana's boy. Mr. Jexy Poops. Say hi. He only has two teefies left on the bottom. That's why he smiles like Goofy, see? Well, she said the bariatric um, is covered by the Medicaid in Pennsylvania, but I don't think it is either. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, Mr. Tiggs loves these. Keeps his teeth really white. The minties. It's made with soy. And um, he's never got sick on them. It's never given them. He's been eating those for seven years. Good grief. It took someone who went blind two years to get disability here in North Carolina. Right? Yeah, I know she always lies. That I do know. So then I got... Because I accidentally got the caramel um and as i get tanner from being outside i wanted to get something more neutral so i just got this by the way if you didn't know this is great for older skin i gotta pump a little um it's 20 or 30 hour coverage and it's by maybelline new york just look for the 30 hour these are on sale I mean, in the store, they're like $13 to $16. But right now, on Amazon, the 30-hour, you could get every color you wanted. Um, they're, they're only $6. Just saying. So the other one was a caramel, and it was too caramely. So I thought I would see if this one is less caramely. We'll see. I don't have anything on Yeah, they're only $6. Yeah, I think that's a better color when you have a tan. Let's do it on the back of my hand. Hold on. We'll put a bunch on there. <laughs> that is pretty... Um... I mean, I like to have a golden glow with my tan, um, which I don't generally get. I usually get just poop brown so that's pretty good that's pretty good color all right all right whatever how many times have you been in your lounger my lounger once i'm doing it tomorrow though and i only lay out for like 45 minutes to an hour because i don't want to burn i just want to get a little color it doesn't take me long i can get color I've only laid out three times. <laughs> but tomorrow's going to be 90 and sunny. Husband's going to be working on the boat. So I figured I would just lay out tomorrow in my lounger. My pool lounger. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you for $10 on the cash app. Thank you for the tip. I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
All right, so let's look up. I wanted to find that case, but you know what? Maybe I, I don't want to find it again. I watched the whole hearing, and I cried. I cried so hard for that beautiful... I can't remember the name of the parents. God, they were just white trash. Oh, my God. How do they do this to our children? God's children, I don't... Mm. See, that's, that's my thing, is children and animals... Thank you, Celebrity Juicer, so much. There are a lot of cases. Actually, the cases, when I click that in, um, I was nauseated by how many cases there are. So then that gave me anxiety. So let's move on. Let's see if... Okay. Is bariatric surgery covered by... Medicaid. Oh, you dick. Come on. I actually accidentally hit the escape button. Okay. Buh. Covered by Medicaid in PA. Let's see. I don't know. There are some exceptions, so. I'm going to put in adult because, of course, they're going to cover children because parents that like, let their children get obese. Son of a gun. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Mm, bariatric surgery may include, now I'm actually looking at Pennsylvania Medicaid, okay? I'm not just reading a blog, because I don't do blogs. I think they're stupid. People can have opinions. Most of them are like assholes. They stink and generally are not wanted. So Pennsylvania, this is, um, may include, Pennsylvania Medicaid generally excludes the coverage of bariatric surgery for morbid obesity, except when all other types of treatment have failed. Prior authorization is required. Patients must have morbid obesity with severe comorbidity and interferes with their daily function to the extent that performance is severely curtailed and no specifically correctable cause for the obesity. Must have documented history of failure in physician supervised nutrition exercise program. So that's what she's doing. That's what she's doing. She is going to make sure she, she covers this so they'll cover it. There are exceptions. See? That's what I mean. They're, say, they're like, Melanie, if you read this, they have to have a documented history of failure in physician supervised nutrition exercise programs. See, she's going to make sure she's a failure at all times so she can get something for nothing. Keep in mind, she's grifting Medicaid with a non existing long COVID diagnosis, right? Yeah, and um, I'm guaranteeing you all the tests they're doing on her is not for cancer. It's probably for diabetes. She probably has all the symptoms of diabetes, which I would be shocked if she didn't have diabetes. She eats and drinks so much sugar. Uh, let's see. They're going to do a... Um, let's see... Yeah, so for bariatric, this is the Pennsylvania Medicaid guidelines. For the um, exceptions, these are the exceptions. If they get authorization, um, they have to have morbid obesity. We already know she's greater than a 35 BMI. My God, she's got to be. Didn't they cancel, like, my 600-pound life? Because didn't they cancel that? So I think so. I think Dr. No, no, Dr. Now's like, no more. Um, these people must get on his damn nerves. Um, 
Man, the money she would make going on TLC, right? Just saying. For real. Because she is one hell of a... Listen, she could pull an audience on TLC. She'll never qualify, qualify. Yeah, who knows? We'll find out. If not, there's no way she can afford it. <laughs> she can't. All they want to do is sit around and sell minimum shit, minimal shit to get high all day and eat. Well, she wants to eat all day. I mean, how else do you blow through $700,000 in less than a year? Just blow it. Speaking of blowing money, did you watch old foodie beauty just blowing her paycheck? She still has not created any content over in Montreal. None. She went out, she put on a dress and she went out with some guy. She even put up a community post of him in bed. Uh, okay, Tinder date perhaps. Got new eyelashes, new dress, new sunglasses, new purse. That's what she does, right? And then um, she goes to meet him and you never seen her again till she woke up this morning. Well, she got home this morning uh, and laid in bed and whined about how bad she felt. Well, cause what? You, oh yeah, you only had two white claws. Okay. You were drunk as a skunk and you know it. She's a drinker. Don't let her make you think she's not. She's a drinker. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm guessing half the time, like the reason her content sucks so bad is because she only films herself eating because first of all, she can write it off if she ever does taxes or goes to federal prison for not doing taxes, whatever Canadian law is. But anyway, yeah, she, um, she does minimal content. So when she's out doing the real fun, hanging out, partying it up, doing crazy shit, she don't film that. She's too lazy to go anywhere except to a Tinder date. Come on. She lays in bed and she manipulates her beezers so that they don't expect anything out of her. Period. Tinder date, taking your picture while you sleep and post it on the internet. Right? Just to make Natter jealous. You know it's right. Every time we want to give her credit, we, we figure out she's doing everything to get Natter's attention. Mm-hmm. Well, I was at the dispensary, and I always think of Nader not having marijuana, so I buy him a little package. So I dropped it off to him. He didn't even appreciate it. You mean he didn't come back to your hotel room and sleep with you and then let you drive him to his court appointment, right? So that's why you were mad at him. He didn't want anything to do with you. He would rather ride a donkey to Gatineau than get in a car with you. That's pretty much what he's telling you. Because we already know you didn't have an aha moment because you're in Montreal in a hotel room and you cried when he wouldn't come. Remember? Remember berries? Then she's out spending money like she don't care. Those beezers paid for all that shit. I got to run in real quick, guys, and get myself a charger. My charger's not working on my phone. She comes back with almost $160 worth of shit. Then she ran in to grab a lipstick. Y'all catch that one? Remember where the dress flew up? She drops something in the car and she got out to get it and she bent over and the wind took her dress up, right? Yeah, that thing. Yeah, well, she went into that Walmart, Walgreens or it's something like that. She never has anything to show for her money. Just junk and, and Uber Eats. So anyway, can you imagine if she worked for Uber Eats? <laughs> First of all, she'd probably lose some weight. And second of all, she doesn't really have to clock in. She can just go pick up food and drop it off at people's houses. Her nor Pete's can do a damn thing. They're like Shani and Rev, right? Mother and son. So anyway, she goes into this Walgreens. Oh, look at this. I need this. Oh my God, I love this lipstick brand. I'm gonna buy two of these. Oh, and I love this lipstick brand. I'm buying this was like watching her eat. You know how the endorphins are released as she's unpacking the bag? Oh my God, da 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 da. Right? Little manic. That's what she does when she buys shit. Like when she gets food delivered, just unpacking the bag, opening them all. 
Look at this. Look at this. And then after she starts biting about the third bite, she relaxes. Right? That's what she did in the store. I watched it. I should get a bath bomb. I should get this. I should get that. Right? And, and then when she pays for it all and gets it in the car, she relaxes. Just like when she goes to a drive-thru. You see her getting a little, you know, buggy. If there's a line, if there's a, she's in line waiting for the food just to order it, like the endorphins, and she gets all frustrated. Oh, my God. Why is the line so long? You're like, God, Jesus. <laughs> then she does her little child voice when she orders the food. Hi. Hi. I can't even, I can't go that high. I've had surgery. Anyway, I know she's live right now. Mm -hmm. So then when she gets the food, she's pulling it out of the bag, making it sure it's got plenty of sauce and all this and that. She starts eating it, and about third bite out of each thing, she chills out. So that is addiction. That's people who will lose everything to feed the addiction. And that's what addiction looks like. Actually, there was a cartoon about it. It was actually sad. Because they said, this is addiction. She got this little bird, right? He's see-through. He's clear. And he's just wandering around, looking up, looking down, looking up. And then he keeps wandering. And then he sees this, this, this yellow something. Well, you can say it's a pill. You can say it's food. It's whatever addiction is. So he goes up to it. He eats it. He turns yellow. And he's jumping all around. And he's so excited. And then slowly, he's back to looking. Like she does with food. It only satisfies her for, like, it's not even about being hungry. It's about the brain. It's about the brain, the chemicals. Um, just like when people crave drugs, right? Too bad she didn't stop eating after those three bites. That's the problem. She won't. Did you see her go when she was... Every emotion is based on food. Every emotion. Now, the only time she did good, I don't even know, is when she was in Cuba. Even though she was a mental mess... She got in touch with herself a little bit. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, she ate, they put her on a schedule, right? They put her on a schedule um, when the cafeteria was open. And she took those long walks to the beach, right? She went in the water. She exercised. And I said, man, if she can go home with just this memory of how she was able to overcome and adapt to a schedule and feel good, um, she's on her way. But she went home and repeated the same behavior. Went right back to her old self. And you want people like this raising kids. Because trust me, nothing matters to them except for feeding that emotional addiction. That's it. Nothing. You can't go back into their childhood and hug that kid that was abused or molested. You can't go back and hug that kid because that kid has learned how to survive. They have learned coping skills and they're going to be damned if you're going to rattle that boat. Or you can rattle it. You can try to rattle it and then think that you've helped them, give them tools, but they will always fall back on what they know best. Unfortunately, this is the way it is. Which is why I'm pretty sure that the federal government stopped giving money for state institutions. Because those people stay there forever. Or they end up coming back quite a few times. Well, most people will die from gluttony, and um, drug, yeah. Um, or your health will just take its toll on you. I mean, you can even see, if you don't fix the psychological, which is almost impossible of a food addict, um, yeah, you can try and give them a quick fix. But guess what? They know every single food. Now, get a load of this. The doctor tells you, you can't eat this shit anymore. 
You can't eat this anymore. You'll have whatever they call that, the dumping syndrome. Uh, you will have horrible um, uh, indigestion, which can cause ulcers, you know, because you don't have a stomach anymore. You have a pouch, right? That's the full bypass. Well, even the pouch people and the band people have learned over time you can stretch that shit back out. So people that are really serious go in usually for the bariatric. I don't ever want to be this bad again, right? The problem is they can do the bare minimum to get approved, right? They can do the bare minimum to get approved with a psychological exam. Um, you can pass with flying colors, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's called bullshitting somebody, right? Just to get what you want. But the truth is they don't care if you bullshit them. They're getting the money. They're going to do the surgery. You're just passing what they need to have approved so they don't get sued, right? This is exactly what they do. So they think that they won because they gaslighted somebody or bullshit them. Okay. You're the one that's got to live with the decision you made. And if you continue to eat the food you love and you think you can just eat less of it, no. That shit will mess you up. Mess you up. Yeah, to where you'll fly. Don't you get near my bubble water. <laughs> um, it's sad to watch, but they're the smartest person. There's nothing you can do. And yeah, a lot of these people end up dying. Um, I've watched my 600 pound life. Um, you see how nutty that one guy is? What's his name? Steven? Oh my God, this guy. He is as nutty as they Come. He had the bariatric surgery, but he is such, oh my God, hold on. What's his name? Oh my God. What's his name? Steven Asante. He has a YouTube channel. Well, does he or doesn't he? I don't know. But look it. I mean, he literally is an example of just what can go wrong. He's losing his hair, his teeth, because he'll eat what he wants when he wants. Look it. This is three months ago. He's in bad shape. Because, oh, did he die? Did he die? He might have. Let me see. He was so... He OD'd. Oh my God. All he does is cry. I mean, look at this stuff. He, he literally went off the deep end mentally. He was taking clippers to his teeth, shaving his teeth. Crazy. That was three months ago. So I don't know. I, I'm on YouTube, I wasn't on though. But I'm just saying, listen, it's not a game. Your health is not a game. It's not a game. Mm -mm. It's not cute. It's just not cute. Um, like you can buy green powders, vegetable. Cause some people, you know, people that get obese, they're not, listen, they're not salad eaters, okay? But look at the stuff you can get. This is um, this is what I get. 
These are organic greens. It's powder, right? You can add it to anything, your juice, anything. Powder form. You don't have to eat vegetables. But I used to put them in my smoothies. Um, this one has everything you can imagine in it, right? You can just put, you can make smoothies, drink one a day. You can also add this, NeoCell collagen for hair, nails, right? Skin, joint support. Um, these are dietary supplements and powders. You can buy them and add them to any food. It's just crazy. It's how you nourish your body. You give it things that food, the food you're eating are not giving you. But like I could live on salads. I swear to God, I could live on salads. I can think of a thousand ways to eat salads because I love them. I love them. I even add little chicken tenders to them, right? From like Chick-fil-A. I'll buy those, bring them home. Because the frozen shit, that's full of garbage. In the grocery store, garbage. So go buy a bunch of chick, the Chick-fil-A chicken from, they, they sell the little cute homemade or make your own from chicken breast. But you can save those, cut them up, put them in chicken, or I mean salad. Um, turkey, um, hard boiled eggs. It's crazy. It's so good for you. But I'm just saying like, I could live on salads. I don't really care for greasy, greasy food. I think it's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And did you know if you drink a cold drink with ice while you're eating greasy food, it actually solidifies the grease inside your body. You're supposed to drink actually a warm liquid. I did not know that, but yeah, that's a thing. You can be doing more damage like to your arteries and shit when you drink cold, Fluids with greasy, hot food. Mm-hmm. Ain't that some shit. But anyway, I'm just saying, like, there are ways to still take care of yourself and eat the things you enjoy, but you have to do everything in moderation. But these people, they get these things done, and it can end up killing them. You know what I'm saying? It can end up killing them because... They don't understand what's happening. Your stomach doesn't have the acids anymore. Shelly, how do you lose weight? Cut out carbs? I just, you know what? I eat moderation. I eat, um, I have treats once in a while. Like I live for my treat day, you know, where I can eat a shitty dinner. But I really love um, picking all day. Just picking at things. Like I'll have, and, and I don't, I'm not even conscious about it. I've trained my brain. I don't think about it. Yeah, and I'm always active. That's the other thing. But like, I love, like I'll go grab um, two pieces of cheese and then have a couple pieces of watermelon. I keep everything in containers in my refrigerator so it's so easy to pull it out and, you know, have a couple bites or something. Um, that's what I do all day. I just pick. And I really don't have a big appetite. You would live off sushi? There you go, make your own. Get the sushi kit. I was thinking about doing that because my husband loves sushi. I was thinking about getting the kit. And do I would only do the California rolls for him, just the vegetables, right? But And then you can go buy the uh, raw tuna and raw salmon. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Raw fish? No, thank you. So anyway, I thought about getting the kit and making like the California rolls my way. <laughs> um, the vegetables I like in it. Yeah, because I love spinach, right? So I got no problems rolling it in spinach. I like rice, but not a lot of it. Um, it's kind of too filling. And then some vegetables. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying like, I've never had a food addiction, so we were raised um, in a not traumatic household. So, you know, we ate when it was mealtime and we had to eat what we, what was on our plate. But when I got older, I went more into the snacking. I just like to snack. We used to have sushi parties and everyone would make rolls. 
Cool. So it is sad. It is, you know, because I already look at Shani and I'm like, yeah, you go in there and you get your bariatric. You're already a whiny bitch. You already want what you want when you want it, how you want it, to the point where you starved your kids. I don't see this as being successful. I mean, I see the weight would come off because you would have no choice, right? Um, but I could see all this killing her too because she got to change her mind. Shani will never change her mind. She wants to be a convalescent old person that somebody takes care of for the rest of their life. That is a mentality. And you see it on my 600 pound life all the time. They want everyone to take care of them because they, they've gotten really good at the victim game. All right, Granny. She needs to get off her butt. Well, we all know what she needs to do. We know, we need, we know Rev needs to keep quit buying junk food. He's the only one that can go out of the house and buy food. He's the enabler. He's the codependent. She probably calls him the whole time he's in the grocery store. And don't you forget to get my toaster strudels. Don't forget my chocolate milk. Don't forget my seven cases of Coca-Cola, root beer, grape soda, right? She only drinks sugar soda. <laughs> my babies. Anyway, I got shit to do today, and I'm sorry, but the wackadoos are all over the internet, and we can't let them um, continue um, doing bad behavior without being called out for it. Because there are people out there struggling with addiction, and it's not fair to them that people are making it seem okay, and people are donating money for bad behavior. Like, that's got to stop. It's got to stop. YouTube needs to stop that shit. For real. Listen, doggies. Yes, I think I like this color. We'll see. I'll be Tanner. Thank you, Charlie girl. Thank you. Glad you subscribed. But we like to cover a lot of stuff. Um, I just had enough internet yesterday after the Shanny, you know, CPS taking the kids. And she's acting like it's a vacation. And she's going to go to school now. And she's going to do this and that. Oh, I'm sorry. Your kids held you back from life. And I'm sorry you held your kids back from life. See, that's why. That's why Willie screams too, by the way. You guys all have a great day too. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you to the new subscribers. And please, if you want to become a member, the link's in the description. We do giveaways. I make private life videos for you guys, which I'm going to be doing all next week. All right, guys. I love y'all. Bye.